सो हाई एवरी वन माई नेम इज शिवम बोहरा वेलकम टू लर्न कंपेरेटिव प्रोग्रामिंग विद कोड शिव सो इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड इन कंपेरेटिव प्रोग्रामिंग एंड वॉन्ट टू लर्न इन मास्टर डेटा स्ट्रक्चर एंड एलगोरिदम्स देन दिस इज अ वन स्टॉप डेस्टिनेशन फॉर यू हेयर वी पोस्ट वीकली प्रॉब्लम एक्सप्लेनेशन कंसेप्चुअल वीडियोज ऑन वेरियस प्रोग्रामिंग पैराडाइम्स एंड ऑल्सो कंडक्ट लाइव प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग सेशंस सो बिफोर वी एक्चुअली गेट स्टार्टेड Here's a reminder for you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already yet. So in this video, we are going to start with the programming part. So let's get started. So till now we were giving instructions in the flowcharts, but the flowcharts are not understood by the computer. The computer only understands the machine language, which is in zeros and ones. Now the problem with machine language is that. it is extremely difficult for us humans to give instructions in the machine language hence we have something called as the programming language now the programming languages are also not directly understood by the computer however they can be converted to machine language using certain softwares hence we can give instructions in the programming languages right and the programming language that we are going to use in this video is c++ so before we actually move on to the programming part let's first understand what is an input and what is an output right so let's say we have made a program now two numbers are given to this program by a human so now this program will calculate the sum of these two numbers and then it will print the sum of these two numbers right for example let's say 4 and 6 are two numbers that are given to this program so this program will calculate the sum of these two numbers and then it will it would simply print the sum of these two numbers right so in this case the input is or the input are the two numbers that are given to this program and the output is the sum that is given by this program right so basically the data given to the program is called as input and the data given by the program is called as output now to run your c++ program we need something called as an ide now this ide could be a software it can also be an online platform it is basically a place where you can write your c++ code and see the code in action or in execution right now some of the famous offline ides or softwares are sublime text vs code and code blocks right now the only issue with offline ides is that you first need to set them up before using them right on the other hand online online ides or online platforms for ides are very very easy to use now the ide that i am going to use in this particular video or in this particular video series is an online ide and the link for that is simply codechef.com/ide simply write this url in your browser and you can simply access that online ide right so now we are on to codechef's official ide you can see that you can see that this is the selected language c++14 if let's say the selected language by default is python then you can simply click it and choose a c++ over here right so this is the place where we will write our program and under the custom input part this is the place where we will give input to the program right so this is a basic structure for a c++ program let's understand the meaning of each and every line now here we can see that the first line is hashtag #include io stream this line is including a header file and this header file is used to make sure that the program can take input from the user and can give output to the user this is basically used to communicate with the user or this is basically to make sure that the program can communicate with the user right so the purpose of this line is for input and output right now this thing over here input and output is a comment right a comment is a part in the program which does not get executed this is not any function or any instruction this is basically a part of the program and this is only used to only used to describe anything in the code or any part of the code 
so here this comment is describing that this line is only for input and output right similarly we have another comment over here right it says your code goes here so in the second line we have using namespace std now the purpose of this line is to reduce reduce the size of the program reduce the size of the program right and this is the main function now this is basically this basically is a main function where we will write our program or this is the main part of our program we can say anything that is written within these two braces would be executed first right so anything that we write inside this main function would be executed right so we'll understand what is the meaning of this int in a minute so here we can see that this is basically a structure of our program now let's say i have to print something let's say i have to print my name so i'll write c out c out hi my name is shiv right and a semicolon now here we can see that we are writing this c out c out is used to print something onto the console or over here we'll see that how it works so after c out i am using two less than signs and after two less than signs i am writing my message inside double quotes i am writing my message inside double quotes and after this i am putting a semicolon this semicolon would be used at the end of each and every line this is used to describe that our sentence or our statement or our instruction has been terminated or this is a single instruction right so every instruction has to be terminated by a semicolon right so if i run this program then it will simply print hi my name is shivam so yeah yeah hi my name is shivam is the output right so let's say we have this example here we have first line written after the first c out and second line written after the second c out right so if i run this program if i run this program then my output would be first line and then second line on the very same line right now let's say i have to print the first line on the first line and the second line on the next next line for that what i have to do is uh, i have to re firstly remove this semicolon and i have to add the new line character right so i have to add this new line character so what i'll do is i'll write these two less than signs again and then a uh, and then inverted commas and within these two inverted commas i have to write slash in forward slash in right and then a semicolon colon so what this would do is this would first print the first line then it would change the line and then on the ne next line it would print second line right so now if i run this program my output would be first line on the very first line and second line on the next line right so alternatively what we can also do is we can also put this slash in at the end of the first line right or after this first line we can add this slash in over here so now again if i run this program then again i'll get the same output so here we can see that the first line is written on the very first line and the second line is written on the next line right so after this c out we have this line return zero now we can simply ignore this part if i even if i remove this line our code would still be executed our code would still get executed so it's running and i still got the same output right but at the same time it's a better practice to write return zero at the end of this main function right so we'll understand what this return is and what this main function is when we will study functions right but for now we can simply ignore this line ignore this line right now let's move on to another example let's say we have to store a number and print it right so firstly to store a number i have to use a variable right so let's say my variable is a i have to use a right but at the same time we have to declare or we have to define the type of this variable or what kind of data this variable is going to store 
Now we know that we have to store a number, a number inside this variable a. So what I will do is I'll write int a, right? Because this int means that this a can store integer type data, right? It can store integer type data. So this line means that a can store a can store integer type type data right and this int is a data type this int is a data type right so this int means that this a can store integer type values right after this we have to store a number inside this a so let's say the input is given from the user the input is given from here so let's say what i will do is i'll write c in a right so just like we were using c out to print something or c out for the output part we will use c in for the input part right and we were using less than signs over here so we are going to use greater than sign in this case right two greater than signs so now we have stored the number over here so this line is for the input part so after that i'll simply write c out c out a right this line is for the output part so now if I give a custom input, let's say my custom input is 7 on, and now if I run this program, so it will simply give us 7, right? So my output is 7. Now in this example, we can see that this int is a data type. This int is a data type, right? So this int shows that this A can store integer type data. This A can store integer type data, right? Now this int is not the only data type that we have. We also have other data types as well. So now let's explore them. So other than int, I have written certain other data types as well. Of course, there are there are other data types also, but these are some of the very basic data types that we have, right? So other than int, we also have something called as char. Now a char is used to store a character, right? Now this character could be a letter, it can also be a number, special symbol, etc. And it can, it can also be certain other things as well, right? Now for here, in this case, I have written a character, A, capital A, right? Now this is a capital letter, but at the same time, we can also store small letters, we can also store numbers, right? We can also store uh, let's say special symbols like and or star etc right and we can also store certain other things as well the only thing over here is that a character has to be enclosed enclosed within single quotes a character has to be enclosed within single quotes right so other than character we also have something called as float so a float is used to store real numbers or decimal type numbers right Similarly, we have something called as a double. A double is also used to store real numbers, but at the same time, they have more precision or double precision, right? So, a double is used to store real numbers, but they can store real numbers or decimal numbers to more number of decimal places as compared to a float, right? After this, we have something called as a bool. A bool stands for boolean. Now there are only two boolean values that we have that which is either true or false we have only two boolean values which is either true or false so this e or this boolean type variable can store either true or false right so these are some of the very basic data types that we have in c plus plus